I would say to people that have already engaged a solicitor and have been told by the solicitor that they have to go and see a mediator in order to make an application to the court to actually go to mediation with an open mind. Uh, mediation isn't just a tick box exercise and hopefully if you had your meeting with the mediator for what's called a mediation information and assessment meeting, it's called a MIAMS, if you meet a skilled mediator, hopefully they'll persuade you to at least give mediation a go, provided that you pass a screening test. Because it gives you the opportunity to have a dialogue with your ex, it keeps it out of court, which can often keep the costs down, it means that it can be resolved much more quickly, and it means you take control over your matter and your life. The biggest misconception I have in family law matters is you get some parts who just want to have a good fight. And I'm telling you this now. If you have a good fight and you spend £20,000 on the privilege of legal representation all the way to a final hearing just in the finances, forget even dealing with the children, that's a whole separate set of costs. Just to hear a judge tell you what your lawyer or your mediator told you right at the outset of the case the outcome would be, you'll feel a lot more demoralised than you realise. There are no winners in family law matters, there really aren't. People don't understand that it's not the same as other traditional forms of litigation. There is no winner, there is no loser. In some ways, both parties lose because the relationship's broken down and there's all the emotional issues that flow from that. So anybody who thinks, oh, well, I'll avoid mediation or collaborative law or arbitration because I want a good almighty scrap and that judge will tell my ex what they are and this, that, it doesn't happen, you'll come away feeling demoralised and depressed and you very rarely get cost orders in family law matters. So what that means is at the end of your trial, when you try to say to the judge, or oh, the other side should pay my costs, very rarely will you get them. Don't spend £20,000 on a lawyer to get all the way to a final hearing simply to get the outcome that you were told you were going to get in your first hearing. I feel sorry, your first meeting with your lawyer. <laughs> That's the truth. As you're aware, mediation is a voluntary process. If a party really doesn't want to engage, and they don't have to. Having said that, the new court procedure provides that everybody has to attend a mediation information assessment meeting before they can progress with a court application. At court, if you still really want to pursue mediation and the other party won't, you can actually ask the judge to make a direction that the parties have to attend mediation properly. So that might be a recourse. If, however, the other party still won't engage properly with mediation, as long as the mediator will say this case is not suitable for mediation, then ultimately it will be up to the judge to put in place a timetable so the matter is eventually resolved. And do not believe that just because you've got proceedings in the court and a court timetable that you will still not settle matters away from the court arena. Your solicitors, or if you're representing yourself, should be working away in the background and should still try to find a resolution away from the court. In fact, courts really like it if you turn up with an agreement on the day of a hearing or before a hearing and ask them to approve it. So don't believe that just because there is court proceedings in place that you will not resolve matters. There is a lot of people actually find the pressure of going to court to be a lot more traumatic and stressful than they realise and are very keen to settle when they get to court or before it. I, mean, I think that offering fixed fee mediation is essential because if you know what you are paying from the outset of the matter, then you're more likely to engage in it and put the cost to one side and just focus on it. It is important that people know that their legal costs are not going to get out of control and it's also important because then it generally gives a structure to how many sessions you need in which to resolve matters and it explains that as you go through it the issues tend to sort of eventually come to a conclusion. But I do think it's very important that people have a clear understanding of costs from the outset. One of the reasons that I set it up is one of the standard questions I'm asked whether as a solicitor or a mediator is how much is it going to cost. Now, when you are engaged as a solicitor, that's much harder to answer because it depends on how the case develops. If people reach agreement very quickly, your costs are going to be a lot less. If it goes all the way to contested final hearings, it could be in the thousands. With mediation, I want to be able to actually give a very clear indication from the outset what it was going to cost. And also it means that we can allow people who are on limited budgets to engage. There's been a great slash in legal aid um, contributions from the government and by actually giving people the opportunity to know what they're going to be spending and know that they can afford it, or at least afford two or three sessions, so they can at least attempt it, and it gives people, I hope, peace of mind. A lot of people think that mediators are going to be a soft touch, that we sit there and you know, we give everybody a cuddle and we're a soft touch. Sometimes we have to be robust and firm and strong to keep the matter on course. So it might be that you need to choose the correct mediator for you. You might want something that's a bit softer, or you might want something a bit more directional. So again, this is about making correct choices regarding mediator for you or for your client.